Hey, welcome to Come Follow Me Weekly. My name is Malia. Hey, this is Jose. And we're super excited to kick off 2020 with the Book of Mormon. So we're going to do the format a little bit different. Uh, many of you have followed us on Come Follow Me Daily in five minutes or less. We did the New Testament last year and hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, but this year we are super busy as our family and we, we felt inspired that we, we can't devote so much time to this on Sundays. We need to do more stuff um, with our family. And so we are going to do one podcast a week. And we're also going to go on YouTube like this. So you can, if you're listening to us, we're also on YouTube. If you're watching us, we're also on iTunes. So check us out there. And we are going to be just really sharing some insights and things that we've learned through that week's reading of the Book of Mormon. So today we're studying uh, the introduction, uh, the three witnesses, and the title page. But we're just going to go over the title page. There's so much in this week. It's super exciting. So hopefully you guys get to dive deep into the Book of Mormon with your family. So we're just going to share a few insights on the title page. So who wrote the title page? Well, if you look at the title page and you go through this with your family, you're going to see that it starts off with an account written by the Hand of Mormon. And then at the end, it says translated by Joseph Smith Jr. So who wrote those words in between? That's the question. So one of the things we use when we're studying the scriptures is, of course, we use scriptures, but we also use institute manuals, which are found on the Church of Jesus Christ uh, dot org. And so this comes from a commentary. On the title page, it says the Book of Mormon title page begins the Book of Mormon, an account written by the hand of Mormon upon the plates taken from the plates of Nephi. So that to me, I thought it was written by Mormon. And this was something we just learned today. It says this is followed by two paragraphs likely authored by the Book of Mormon prophet Moroni, son of Mormon. The prophet Joseph Smith explained that the title page of the Book of Mormon is a literal translation taken from the very last leaf on the left hand side of the collection or book of plates, which contain the record which has been translated. The language of the whole writing the same as all Hebrew writing in general was went from right to left. And that said title page is not by any means a modern composition, either of mine or any other man who has lived or does live in this generation. That's cool, I didn't know that. So they think it was Moroni that wrote the title page. Pretty awesome. So we're talking about one of the things um, Oh, I love here how it talks about that hit up unto the Lord so that the records were hit up unto the Lord. And it mentions that same phrase twice, hit up unto the Lord. And one of the thoughts I had as I was reading this like a year ago was that Christ is a protector of, of sacred things and how the Book of Mormon really is sacred to us, right? And we should value it. Yeah, another thing that's interesting here is that it's uh, written to help us to come to know Christ as our Savior and our Redeemer and how us taking these words and sharing them with our families that they have the opportunity to also come to know Jesus Christ as our Savior as well. Because we know that it's only through Him and by Him that we're able to return to the presence of our Heavenly Father and be able to have families that are eternal families. And we need to help our children understand how to follow our Savior Jesus Christ and this uh, title um, introduction mentions that it's important for us to understand who he is and that he is the Savior of the world. Yeah, I love that. And it also shows um, like one of the first things that happened in the Restoration was the first vision, right? And one of the things that President Benson, who was the prophet when I was a young kid, he says, a powerful testimony of the importance of the Book of Mormon is to know where the Lord places its coming forth in the timetable of the unfolding of the restoration. The only thing that preceded it was the first vision. In that marvelous manifestation, the prophet Joseph Smith learned the true nature of God and that God had a work for him to do. The coming forth of the Book of Mormon was the next thing to follow. So the Book of Mormon was presented to Joseph Smith before the priesthood, before we learned about celestial marriage and for the work of the dead. All these things happen after he was given the Book of Mormon. And then he translated through that process. We learned about, you know, the restoration, the priesthood, and other things that happened. But the church was not organized until the translation of the Book of Mormon was complete. And so it shows, it should show us the importance. And at the end of that quote, uh, President Benson says, doesn't this tell us something about how the Lord views this sacred work? 
And honestly, that's a question we need to ask our families, right? Is how, how should we be viewing the Book of Mormon? Should we be throwing it on the floor, treating it lightly, not reading it as a family? Like, how should we be treating it? Yeah, it just uh, kind of reminds me of when the, in the stories that we learned from the Book of Mormon and Nephi and how they left on their journey, but then they were commanded back to go for the brass plates and the importance of taking those brass plates. Well, here we kind of see the importance of the Book of Mormon that has to have in our lives so that we can have that treasure that is going to bring us closer to our Savior Jesus Christ. So it is very important. And the way it was laid out, it was to ensure that we had the opportunity and the means to be able to read these words. And so that translation, that work, which was by the gift and power of God, was essential for us to have prior to the establishing of, of the church and, and all the other things that, that came after that. Yeah, so important. And if you think about it, I mean, where did the plates go? They were written and they were buried in the ground for hundreds of years. And so they had to have known or seen us, right? It talks about that they've seen our day. And, and why did they put those stories there and how can they help us and bless us in our lives? And so um, the process of how the Book of Mormon came about is pretty miraculous, right? It says in there, what does it say, Jose, about the, um, by the gift and power of God, right? So it says, sealed by the hand of Moroni and hid up unto the Lord to come forth in due time by way of the Gentile, the interpretation thereof by the gift of God. So this is a quote that I had never heard. This comes from Emma Smith. And in 1856, he was a scribe. She was a scribe for Joseph Smith. And it says, when my husband was translating the Book of Mormon, I wrote a part of it as he dictated each sentence word for word. And when he came to proper names, he could not pronounce or long words, he spelled them out. And while I was writing them, if I made any mistake in spelling, he would stop me and correct my spelling although it was impossible for him to see how I was writing them down at the time. Can you imagine? Like, not only was he, it had to be perfect in that translation. Like, we just studied the book, we just studied the New Testament, and we know that we believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly. And we also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. It says nothing about if it was translated correctly or not. We know that this was translated by the word of God so much so that even the spelling the Lord knew when she would write something down, he would tell her, tell, tell Joe Smith to make those corrections. That's pretty amazing. And then it says when he stopped for any purpose at any time, he would, when he commenced again, begin where he left off without any hesitation. And one time while he was translating, he stopped suddenly pale as a sheet and said, Emma, did Jerusalem have walls around it? When I answered yes, he replied, oh, I didn't know. I was afraid I had been deceived. He had such a limited knowledge of history at that time that he didn't even know that Jerusalem was surrounded by walls. And I love that the fact that the Lord took a humble farm boy and, and what he did with, with Joseph Smith's willingness to be tutored by the Lord and what a great giant and leader he became, which to me gives us hope for ourselves that we can do great things in the eyes of the Lord if we are just willing to follow him and do our part. No, I had heard the accounts of Joseph Smith when he was translating the Book of Mormon where he was able to pick off where he had left off after they had taken a break and, and so on and so forth. But this time, hearing about this story where he actually stopped and made sure that the spelling of the name was correct or that he was able to give that insight to, to his wife as she was um, being the scribe uh, was interesting and powerful for me because then that, that kind of just shows you another level of how that translation process happened, that it was, he was very in tune with the Holy Ghost and, and through the gift and power of God that he was able to accomplish this. That was no other way that he would have been able to do this work. And so it shows us that it was very important that he get it right. Right. And how important it is for us that we learn those lessons of being in tune with the Lord and the Lord can help us, right? We're not, we're not <laughs> translating any sacred works, but we are helping God's children return back to him, right? As parents, as mom and dads, as brothers and sisters, we're here to help our family and that 
as we stay close to the Lord and pray for that inspiration, because I'm sure he did a lot of praying, praying before he was translating and, and that great gift. So one last story that I wanted to share with you comes from Saints. And Saints is another great resource for uh, church history, great for studying Doctrine and Covenants, but also lay groundwork for the Book of Mormon because of, um, of what was going on in that process of the translation. And so this is a story that I had never heard until I, I read the book Saints. And it's in your gospel library. If you can read it, it's on page 70. And it says, one day, so this is talking about um, the Whitmores. So Joseph Smith was staying, Joseph and Emma were staying with the Whitmores. And the mother was very taxed with having to feed more mouths as they were translating the, the plates. And this was an experience that she had. It says, one day while she was out by the barn where the cows were milked, she saw a gray-haired man with a knapsack slung across his shoulder. His sudden appearance frightened her, but as he approached, he spoke to her in a kind voice that set her at ease. My name is Moroni, he said. You have become pretty tired with all the extra work you have to do. He swung the knapsack off his shoulder, and Mary watched as he started to untie it. You have been very faithful and diligent in your labors, he continued. It is proper, therefore, that you should receive a witness that your faith may be strengthened. Moroni opened his knapsack and removed the gold plates. He held them in front of her and turned their pages so she could see the writings on them. After he turned the last page, he urged her to be patient and faithful as she carried the extra burden a little longer. He promised she would be blessed for it. The old man vanished a moment later, leaving Mary alone. She still had work to do, but that no longer troubled her. I love that as a mother, I know how hard it could be. The daily laundry and cooking and piling up and then to have extra mouths to feed, I can't even imagine. But that the Lord saw her service, even if it was just cleaning the clothes and, and feeding the people, that it was so important and that he gave her that witness. That's a pretty awesome story. And I'm so grateful that we too can have the witness of the Book of Mormon and know for ourselves if this work is true. And so I'm excited to teach our family and our kids and um, and chat with you guys. If you guys have any thoughts on the, the title page, I know we just talked about one part, the title page, two paragraphs in 12 minutes. So um, we just felt like this was important and, and hopefully can hear your insights on the rest of your studies. Yeah, likewise, just uh, how she was able to get this uh, tender mercy from the Lord that Moroni was able to show her the place so that she could have that surefire testimony of her own. And you know, likewise, each of us has to gain our own testimony of the Book of Mormon so that we can know for ourselves and we don't have to rely on anybody else telling us what this is. So that's the hope for our families is that our children can gain that testimony for them for their for themselves. And and it's awesome to see when you see one of your one of your children get that um, prayers answered for them and, and that they're able to have that witness for themselves and how you wish that obviously you know we have five children you know you know they, they will all get it at one point in their time um, of their lives right but it, it's a wonderful process to see so hoping that you guys have that sweet, tender mercy as well, that you are able to see that happen with your families and your children and wherever your family situation is. So we just encourage you guys to find your time that you're going to carve out to read the Book of Mormon, whether that's, you know, daily as the prophets asked us to read every day of the Book of Mormon or Sundays diving deeper into Come Follow Me and that we can be a small part of that journey. So, so thanks for joining us today on Come Follow Me Weekly and we will see you next week.